Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm Mori Garib, uh, CAS Director. I want to welcome all of you, our guests from universities and corporate partners and uh, others. Uh, this is going to be our annual program review. Actually, this is will be missed one year, and also our sixth anniversary uh, celebration. Um, with this short introduction, I would like to introduce Professor Dr. Tom Rosenbaum to introduce uh, you know, the program and you know, start the whole thing. Thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you, Maury. Uh, it, it's really a great pleasure to welcome everyone here for what I'm sure will be an exciting and uh, productive day. Uh, the writer and uh, Nobel laureate Alice Munro uh, said that the constant happiness is curiosity. So by that mark, today will be an incredibly happy day. And if you are part of caste, you are floating on this sea of curiosity and reward and happiness. Uh, it's hard to believe, actually, and I was just saying to Kent that it's six years. I, maybe it feels that way to you, Maury, but it was, it's really been a fabulous time to see this institution stand up and the incredible impact that it's having. Uh, the notion that you can advance the collective motion of robots and drones. You can develop the instruments that test them and actually produce data that lets you both design and evaluate performance. The feeding in of artificial intelligence and sort of this connection between hardware and software. The bio-inspiration, and we've seen that in a number of developments coming out of CAST. And all this in the context of social good and scientific good, setting the directions that we should be able to go to affect society and improve society. And I think CAST has a wonderful story this way and we're eager to hear your evaluations of that and we wanna thank you for your participation and contributions to making that a reality. Uh, Another aspect of CAS that I just wanted to underscore, and I'm sure it'll come out in the talks, is that this is a shared curiosity. There are really strong connections here between campus, between JPL, and between our corporate partners. And it's unusual, actually, to get this working in such a flexible and important way. And I think CAS is really a bellwether for what is going to be the future of technological advancement in this organizational sense, as well as the curiosity sense. So I wanted to end with a quote from another, uh, another writer, Marcel Proust, who wrote, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So I am looking forward to an eye-opening day. Thank you very much, and with that, let me introduce my colleague, Deputy Director of uh, JPL and uh, retired Air Force General, Larry James. Well, good morning again and welcome. And Maury, thanks for the invitation and uh, certainly thanks for all the uh, incredible work that CAST is doing. Um, it's certainly my pleasure to be here to represent JPL. As Tom said, there's just an incredible synergy between the work that goes on at JPL, the work that goes on at Caltech, and in particular CAS from an autonomy perspective. And frankly, uh, this goes way back to my personal roots. Uh, my very first project in the Air Force was called ANARS, Autonomous Navigation and Attitude Reference System for the Shuttle. And so this was a project that actually flew on STS-4, uh, the fourth shuttle mission to demonstrate that we could actually navigate autonomously for the shuttle using basically two telescopes to do navigation, the standard navigation of shooting the moon and the stars, uh, back before GPS. So I think we've come a long way uh, in terms of autonomy and capability, uh, but as you look at what CAST is actually doing and frankly the partnership with JPL, it is extremely important to us. Autonomy is kind of our lifeblood right now in terms of these incredible future missions that we are trying to construct. Uh, we have a near-term mission called CADRE, the Cooperative Autonomous uh, 
distributed robotic exploration. I have to remember that acronym. But these are a set of three robots that we are currently building right now that will launch on Intuitive Missions 3, uh, going to the moon to demonstrate that robots operating in conjunction with each other and autonomously can actually do lunar exploration on their own. Uh, and so that's a near-term mission that we're doing. But we have a host of missions that we plan for the future. As we go to the outer planets, it's incredibly important that we continue to have autonomous capability that will continue to get better and better. Because frankly, the terrain and the environments that we are operating in demand autonomy. And so this partnership with CAS continues to help us to really drive autonomy forward uh, from a mission and JPL perspective. Um, uh, even in ne the near term as well, uh, we just uploaded some autonomous AI software onto our Perseverance rover on Mars, uh, giving the rover enhanced capability to really plan its day. Uh, if you look at how we operate the rovers today, essentially our mission planners will send up a plan for the next 24 hours, but they generally have to be very conservative in how they go through step by step what the rover is going to do. To do. For example, if we have to turn on a heater to heat up a joint in the robotic arm, we have to allow a certain amount of time in the plan. But the reality is if it takes less time, the rover just waits. But with this autonomous capability that we've just added to the rover, instead of waiting, the rover will either look at another sequence of events it can execute during that time, or will power down to save power on our uh, RTG. So uh, again, autonomy is woven throughout all that we do. Uh, CAST is an incredible partner for JPL in terms of advancing the state of the art. And we've been partners with CAST since the inception. I mean, we basically helped to start this together, uh, and we've continued to be partners in terms of developing the new cap technologies and capabilities. So exciting to really have the campus and JPL and industry come together today to really highlight what's been done, but also set the vision for the future. And uh, we look forward to continued partnership and continued incredible exploration based on what we do here. So welcome to the day and look forward to all the great results. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Harry Atwater. I serve as division chair for the engineering and applied science division here at Caltech. And uh, I'll start by noting uh, in the words of the uh, American playwright and author Oscar Wilde, he uh, once opined uh, to a friend, uh, you see the world that is and ask why. I see the world that never was and ask why not. And indeed, uh, one of our Caltech her heroes, uh, Theodore von Karman, adopted this for himself uh, and said, scientists create the world or discover the world that exists and engineers create the world that never was. Uh, and indeed, that's the true spirit of uh, engineering and applied science at Caltech. We're pushing the boundaries of science and technology for societal impact. And Caltech is a small institution and we can't do everything. So one of the core values of the place is to do a few things but do them well. And Robotics and autonomy is one of the few things that Caltech has chosen to do and to do well. Uh, and indeed, CAST is core to our strategy and our ability to uh, lead in research and partnership with JPL. Uh, but I also wanted to share, in addition to the exciting research that you're going to hear about over the next two days, that uh, the Engineering and Applied Science Division uh, educates the largest number among the divisions of both graduate students and undergraduate students. This, is, this academic mission is really crucial. And I also wanted to share that the two most popular undergraduate majors at Caltech are computer science and mechanical and civil engineering. Why mechanical and civil engineering? Largely because and, uh, of the burgeoning and extremely popular curriculum offerings in robotics and autonomy. And indeed, it's this uh, convergence of computing and robotics and autonomy that is really at the core of the interests of our undergraduates on campus. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of the work uh, research uh, and the work of graduate students and postdocs here today uh, and tomorrow. Uh, but this is really uh, a force that's driving the future uh, among our undergraduates as well. 
Uh, so CAST is one of our, uh, the, the uh, special research centers uh, that uh, the Division of Engineering uh, oversees. Uh, and its work is central to efforts in national security, healthcare, agriculture, uh, to name a few. Uh, for example, just a, a, a month ago or so, uh, the XPRIZE Foundation released a call for proposals for uh, fighting wildfires. And this is something that uh, we know, of course, in the era of climate change is a, is a burgeoning problem. And it's one, and one of the two tracks, the two tracks that, uh, uh, of research uh, proposals that are responsive to this prize, one is in uh, space-borne methods, uh, which of course uh, we have an ability to respond to, and the other was in robotics and autonomy. Uh, so it's this spirit of, uh, and in fact, uh, um, uh, uh, Caltech uh, Air, Air, aerospace engineer uh, John DeBeery, through his role in the Presidential Council on Science and Technology, led the effort to elevate nationally the importance of wildfire fighting and the role of autonomy, actually, in, his, in the report that he generated on the subject. So this is just one vignette to give you an idea of the impact uh, that CAST uh, and the intellectual themes that CAST advances uh, has here at Caltech. Uh, so with that, I want to welcome you for uh, a, a two-day meeting that we hope and expect will be uh, stimulating and productive and ultimately drive future collaborations uh, for benefit uh, for your institutions and here in partnership with Caltech and JPL. Thank you. Welcome again uh, to this um, annual review and also the sixth anniversary of the uh, inauguration of CAST. Um, I would like to start with a, uh, a story here. Um, in 1918, Dr. Theodor von Karman was the engineering group director at Fisherman Airfield in Hungary. Um, he and his group uh, designed and built a small unmanned drone helicopter powered by a single rotary piston engine that used a coaxial double blade rotor. It, it was called PKZ-2. PKZ-2 was flown and used as a tethered observational uh, platform during World War I to watch the battlefronts. About 100 years later, a um, group of engineers at JPL uh, designed an astonishingly similar helicopter for uh, scouting Mars frontiers. So. Um, it was interesting that uh, the uh, uh, engineers at uh, JPL realized that in order to uh, be able to fly this machine autonomously, they needed to simulate the Mars's thin air wind. So in that respect, you know, they uh, approached uh, CAST. And uh, three graduate students, Marcel Weissman, uh, Chris Doherty, and uh, Alejandro Vahala, uh, Zavala uh, designed a wind tunnel that is specifically, uh, the, its purpose was to simulate the wind condition at Mars, in Mars. And uh, this, this uh, wind tunnel uh, that they uh, designed and actually uh, worked with engineers at JPL to install it in their environmental chamber was the key in, in order to uh, uh, software programmers to be able to test their autonomous control systems on the helicopter. And they credited uh, these three students for uh, their effort and the, the key to success for the Mars, uh, ingenuity. Um, but that wind tunnel actually uh, was a replication of another wind tunnel that these three students designed and built at CAST, which is a centerpiece of the CAST. And it uh, consists of 2,700 fans that it can generate they basically all kind of different flow conditions and a drone can uh, face actually in actual flights. And um, this is a unique design and um, uh, it's being uh, uh, replicated all, uh, all around the country uh, by other universities and other institutes of technologies. So CAST that these three students actually uh, were from uh, was created in 2017 uh, and uh, spearheaded by uh, then uh, division chair uh, R.S. Osakis and to a certain extent myself in order to serve as a venue 
to attract creative scientists and engineers from Caltech and JPL and its affiliated corporate partners and research institutions to work together to develop novel autonomous machines that could serve as companions to our scientists and engineers. Um, in that respect, basically, we were following the vision that Carl Sagan had, a world where autonomous intelligent machines work alongside human and augment human abilities. Today, CAST, with its affiliate uh, facilities, um, stands uh, tall among all the other centers at Caltech. And in that respect, we are very proud of what we have achieved in the past six years. In order to develop the science and technology to build autonomous machines that combine able bodies and intelligent minds, we set um, ambitious goals uh, or ambitious moonshots and goals and practical demonstration through benchmark platforms. Um, These moonshots, moonshots, five of them, actually represent each one of them the challenges that uh, researchers in the field of autonomy and robotics will, uh, will face. And um, what we did is that we tried to support projects uh, in that respect, and all of them should be within these pillars of moonshots. It's important to mention that CAST was created with the initial gift of $20 million from Foster and Coco Stanbeck, which included capital for renovating the Carmen building, endowments, and, and matching gifts uh, program to encourage others to support us. And also by the support from Kent Caressa and Lynn Booth to establish the Booth Caressa Leadership Chair for CAST in 2018. Additional philanthropy also came from other uh, alum, uh, like uh, Gary Kleinart and Evangelos Simone, and of course others. Um, of course, uh, all of these uh, achievements that we have uh, done, and you will find out uh, through the today and tomorrow, uh, the, the, in details, what kind of uh, uh, achievements we have made, uh, done by our graduate students, our postdocs, and faculty affiliates. Now, um, to support them, we needed to uh, uh, have uh, some sort of introduction to real life, you know, the also problems. In that respect, to facilitate this process, the Office of Technology Transfer and Corporate Partnership, OTTCP, helped establish the CAS Corporate Partner Program. To date, the program, the program counts six major technology partners, including Air Environment, Beyond Limits, BP, Raytheon Technologies, and Verizon, and recently by research collaboration agreement with Abu Dhabi's TII, Technology Innovation Institute. Now, um, I would like to um, finish my um, uh, short introduction by mentioning in the last six years, uh, CAS supported 98 research projects with 52 of them still active. And this support came from either direct corporate partnership or uh, endowment uh, and also by uh, the discretionary funds that CAST uh, had. Uh, we had 147 current or past undergraduate students either serve or work study who received support from CAST uh, or utilized CAST facilities. 39 current or past graduate students who received support from CAST or use our facilities. The 40 postdocs fellows who receive support from CAST or utilize CAST facilities. And proudly 28 PhD students that receive their PhDs uh, from CAST support or using our facilities. With this, I would like to now stop and introduce Professor Aaron Ames, who is going to be the chair of the next session. Aaron. <laughs>